Hello and welcome back. It's day 38. It's the second episode of this Growing Sweet Banana Peppers from Seed Series. As you can see, there's this little white furry flying insect that's landed on one of my true leaves in the center. I can't squish it like that, but I could try to bat it away with one of my fingers. Oftentimes, bugs like this will play this childish hide around the tree trunk kind of game where if you try to touch them and brush them off, they'll just go to the other side of the leaf or the stem and repeat that infinitely and never get the hint and go away. So I'm going to try to bat that off so I can get rid of it. I think it's a parasitic pest. As you can see, the bottom of the stem is sort of a reddish color. I think that might just be a coloration feature of a lot of nascently developing plants since I've experienced that with many different plant series, but it could also be a sign that the plant is under stress and has a front row seat on the struggle bus and has a lot of problems that need to be dealt with, such as uh, whatever is causing the leaves to be the plant to be underdeveloped at this point. So I squished this with my thumb later on and dealt with it. If any of you can ID this insect, uh, please leave a note in the comments. And I bought a new box of miracle Grow for different reasons. Um, not really for this plant, actually. This new version has more micronutrients. It has all these trace metals in it, not just nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. It's got boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. So that's good. Maybe it's an upgrade over the previous version that I had for many years. So I made a very dilute solution. For the first time in my life, I actually follow the miracle Grow instructions to dilute this stuff. Maybe not to the T, but I'm still sort of using it wrong in this case because this is an outdoor plant. And the concentration that's in the squirt bottle is for indoor plants. So there's a lot less of it because if there's a lot less light being received indoors, then there won't be as much of a need for development and such a high metabolism to use stuff. So anyway, the reason I'm using this here is because in this pot I've already used some miracle Grow fertilizer. I sprinkled some crystals on top of some barely buried seeds, so I might as well, since the whole thing is uh, tainted in the eyes of people who uh, hate stuff like that. So it's day 46, and there's a spider mite, an adult, on the underside of one of those leaves. It probably spread from this raspberry plant to the left of us. So I'm using the Aspectricide Triazicide Insect Killer. And it's got pyrethrins, it's got piperonal butoxide to help deliver that. So pyrethrins are a class of insecticides naturally occurring chrysanthemum flowers and they've been extracted and refined. And maybe there's even some synthetic analogs out there, but you need a delivery system. Um, some compounds are semi-dissolvable in water or not really dissolvable so you need to put them in organic solvents uh, whether that's going to be ethanol uh, like compounds or whatever um, yeah you, you just have to dissolve them in various chemicals to try to deliver them to the insect pest that you're trying to get rid of otherwise if it's not really water soluble it's not going to get into anything that you spray on. So this applies to most of the plants that I've grown or will grow in the future. It can be applied on the day of harvest so it's pretty weak. Um, pyrethrins don't do anything to mammals like us but they uh, get rid of invertebrates so they can be dangerous to fish and you don't want to get this into the water supply but scale insects, uh, earwigs, uh, I never get the cool stuff like tomato hornworms. I always get things like spider mites instead. Uh, the disgusting little vermin. So, yeah, store this in a cool place and obviously don't spray it into your eyes. So I'm just going to shake this and apply it. The top is a little weird. It's sort of, the button is weird and I thought there would be a straw to stick in, kind of like an air duster, but that's not how this is. So don't follow the instructions of holding it 18 to 24 inches. Step back a few feet and give it a test spray on something 
uh, because if you spray in that piperonal butoxide that white uh, enhancer cakes on everything like it does here and you spray too long because it's your first time and you're inexperienced you're gonna burn the leaves so everything will pretty much burn your leaves if you keep spraying you know if it's not water and you keep spraying that insecticidal soap that I've used on the raspberry plant you're gonna burn the leaves so uh, this is no exception so it's day 48 the leaves keep wilting in the morning sun and just on another note um, you know, I know some people are gonna say yeah just douse your whole plant in neem oil and set it on fire and you know throw it over your shoulder you're done but I have very severe doubts about the efficacy of a lot of these uh, so-called organic pest control methods or you can spend a lot of money to buy predators of spider mites and whatnot but um, yeah you can't beat the efficacy of something in a spray can um, pyrethrins are actually pretty weak they have a very short half-life so that's why they said on a can you can spray even up to the and on the day of harvest whereas um, yeah yeah like I, I, don't, I just don't think neem oil is gonna get the job done so it's day 53 and I noticed some growth but the roots seemingly can't supply water fast enough when whenever the Sun strikes this thing it's really bizarre maybe I just haven't watered deep enough so this soil mostly on the top is clay mixed with potting mix and when clay dries out it becomes almost impermeable for a long time you have to keep watering and watering so maybe I just need to water deeper to get the job done but there's definitely growth I mean you can see so many new sets of leaves but they're all ugly and wrinkled like that so that's not a good sign it sort of is a good sign that it's growing but and this trick of spraying or squirting some light fertilizer at the base of the stem I, it does two things it, it fertilizes and it aerates the base and hopefully the top portion of the root system just in case uh, oxygenation is a problem due to the heaviness of the clay soil but who knows what's really going on in there I figured the clay soil would be very nutritious so this thing would just grow like gangbusters but it's not doing that and we're already up to 50 something days and it's not uh, anywhere near harvest uh, I think the packet said 72 days or whatever to harvest uh, that's a pretty much a joke at this point so it's day 56 and my sweet banana pepper plant is looking a little bit better I think all the waterings may have helped um, you see little strands of gossamer silk basically spiders are constantly trying to spin webs there's a lot of spider mites due to the growing mediums I'm using and uh, mango seed smoothies and whatnot there's just a lot of bugs in this zone uh, maybe it has to do with all the plants in the courtyard too so there's constantly all these um, half spun webs or threads of webs that I need to brush out of the way. So it's day 57, the day after, and this will be the third pot to receive some mango seed smoothie as fertilizer. I'm going to blend these two mango seeds. These are actually good seeds. They're pale and not rotten looking and I don't know if that matters in the grand scheme of things since this is all going to rot anyway after it's blended and poured on top but uh, for aesthetic reasons it does matter so we're going to give that some time and after a few minutes pass and it's warmed up in the water those are frozen I blended and as you can see this is totally different from say a banana peel smoothie it doesn't oxidize before our very eyes just maintains this uh, sort of a powder milk consistency so that's pretty good and yeah we're gonna pour it on top and see what happens so for my raspberry plant in my Joshua tree I noticed really really good results doing this I would not include any kind of fruit peels uh, but this pouring action was a little violent so it seems like I may have disturbed the soil, especially around here. It sort of exposed uh, one of the mango seeds that 
I had buried underneath. So I'm going to look into that and see if they're having any progress. And if not, I'm going to have to get rid of that because I don't want these giant masses of moldy mango seed to fester in there. So as you can see, the angle of the balcony is a little geared towards uh, water running off the edge. So we're going to rinse off this blender and pour the rest of it in. There's a lot of uh, material that we don't want to go to waste. So the pot is tilted and you can see all the fluid more or less uh, favoring the side where the seed is, I mean the seedling. And I think that's actually good for the seedling. I don't know if it had anything to do with germination. Um, I don't remember the exact orientation of the pot originally. Um, I need to go back and check, but I think maybe since all the water runs towards the edge that's facing the balcony, and that also gets more sun, as you can see, as we're approaching noon here, um, this seedling, or the seed, originally just got more water and more sunlight, more warmth, and that's why it germinated. So you can see all the water running towards there. So it's 11 days later, and I did a second application. I brought the Joshua tree over, and all three of these plants need to be bombed like that because uh, the Joshua tree is actually okay, I think. Um, scale insects keep showing up uh, once in a while, but they don't reproduce very fast like the spider mites do. But yeah, we're in crisis mode here, so I had really no choice. It's day 60. And I'm going to dig out the molding mango seeds. This has been exposed and I saw white globules of mold or whatever. I mean, it could be mycorrhizal fungi, mushrooms, but I don't think I'm seeing that in any of my pots. It's more just like nasty garden variety molds of the bad kind, as you can see spots in the background. So it's day 60 and it's not looking bad at all. The leaves are a lot bigger and new leaves are popping out. I know the old leaves don't look aesthetic and they all look sort of curly and dry. So it's only been was it three days since the mango seed smoothie was poured on top. Maybe it's already having an effect. Maybe it doesn't need to decompose for a long time or maybe because it's so finely blended the decomposition with microbes mixed in uh, it just provides for a giant surface area by which uh, nutrients can break down and be released. It also seals in moisture too, which it seems this plant was uh, struggling to get enough of. So on the other side, it's a little lighter on the mango seed smoothie, but I'm surprised after three weeks, um, I don't even see nary a root here. So not even root tips came out. So I, I've tried a lot of mango seed germination experiments since my first series ended um, earlier in 2018. That was actually started, let's see, uh, halfway through 2017. So this was clearly a failure. Don't ever trust uh, burying a large seed in wet dirt and hoping something's going to pop out. More often than not, it won't. And it's just going to rot away and generate fungus gnats. So I'm going to smooth this over and I could fertilize more in the future but you can see clearly the thick crust of mango seed smoothie is on the side of the seed which is where it should be and where it needs to be. The other side of the pot is a little bit irrelevant right now unless I plant something else there. So that's basically my solution for now and I hope by the time I have a third episode to show you that the development will have been huge.